cruising the naked and tides of the patient is seamless. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. On this Easter day, we gather to celebrate new life in Jesus Christ. We prepare to be drawn into these mysteries by acknowledging our sins and asking the Lord's pardon and peace. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are risen from the dead. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have appeared to the disciples along the way. Alleluia. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honor 
of the risen Lord. And that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. <coughs> With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They then laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has struck with power. The Lord's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for the reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that, you, so that when you are maligned 
those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death, the put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. me will keep my word says the Lord and my father will love him and we will come to him Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me and whoever loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him the gospel of the Lord He did it again. Jesus caught the disciples off guard. This motley crew that Jesus had assembled from ordinary day to day living were very devout in their living of the covenant of Judaism. Many of them knew it inside out backwards and forwards, right side up. They knew well the commandments, and they knew well how important it was to keep the commandments. But as far as Jesus is concerned, he snuck in a little word. He said, whoever keeps my commandments, that would have been earth shattering to the disciples of his time. And not only the fact that 
Jesus is speaking about the commandments being his, but he's also telling them to keep them. Now, at least that's the word we get in English. Uh, when you start delving more deeply into the biblical text and into the language of Jesus, that verb to keep means essentially to protect, to guard, and to nurture so as to bring forth life. See, for Jesus, when it comes to the commandments, they are not to be a checklist. They are not to be something that says, oh, well, I, I didn't go to an idol shrine. Uh, I didn't use God's name in vain. I'll talk about all the other words I use. Uh, <laughs> kept holy the Sabbath. Yeah, I went to synagogue, I went to church, had to endure a long preacher, but I was there. I honored father and mother. Yeah, I gave him a call. What more do you want? I didn't kill, but we won't talk about anger or anything else. And that list can go on and on with the remainder. For Jesus, these were never, ever, ever to be a checklist. They were the imparting of wisdom, a way of living that us as his recipients were meant to guard in such a way that that life of the commandments would grow and it would develop. That insight that Jesus has and that he uses with the disciples, he, he draws it from day-to-day -day human experience. I mean, if you think about this weekend and uh, all of the great festivities connected with reunion and meeting up with fellow classmates, what are we doing? We're remembering words. We're remembering insights. We're remembering wisdom that was imparted under the banner of Holy Family University. A wisdom that as professors, students, staff, and administrators, it's a wisdom that we breathe in here and that becomes part of us. And it has been offered with a view in mind, this isn't just information, to pass a test, so I can check this course off the sequence sheet, or no, we call it a different name now, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's not just to be a course I check off, and that when I get enough of these, I get to walk in graduation. That's not what this is about. It's been about bringing in the wisdom of a way of living imparted under the patronage the Holy Family of Nazareth. It's been entrusted to you to grow, to be nurtured, and to be an instrument of changing the world. And even that builds on an even more fundamental experience that all of us hopefully have had and have had well. For as human beings, the initial wisdom for living life, the initial wisdom for being a full human being is imparted to us by another person, one that we call mom. And all of that wisdom that mom has given principally with the gentleness and silence of her life. That wisdom has been entrusted to us. And mom, as we know, especially for those of you who are moms and grandmoms and godmothers, you know that as you offer that, you do so with the anticipation that this is going to take root, that it's going to grow, and that it's going to blossom into a very wonderful, unique human being.
that's what Jesus takes. He takes that rich experience of human living and how we impart to one another those insights for living life. But he does ask us. In fact, actually, he's a little stronger. If we're going to be his disciple, he commands us. He commands us to take his wisdom. And as we know, there's dimensions of, of his way of living that is a joy to embrace initially. There is also part of his wisdom that is a challenge, the cross that is ever present in our work. But on this Easter day, and as we celebrate this new life of resurrection, Jesus is, is begging us as his disciples in the 21st century to allow his words not just to be knowledge, not just to be a, a piece of theological trivia that I simply know, but for it to make that infinite journey, as Einstein once commented, from the mind to the heart, and for that wisdom of Jesus to lie in the heart, so that everything that we think, everything that we say, everything that we do is charged with that very marvelous life of resurrection that he has won for us, and thus redefining what it means to be human. It is a tremendous, tremendous gift that the Lord pours out in the gift of his risen and glorified body. A gift that is freely shared with us and given with just one expectation, with just one request on the part of the giver, Jesus that we accept his wisdom and his insight as a wisdom that is second to none. That I always start in all of my thoughts, words, and deeds with those of our Lord Jesus, who has taught us the way to sacrificial living and has redefined for us once and for all, what it means to be beings who can love. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, the light of the light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down to heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He has descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, the body of Christ. May she always hunger and nurture the life giving word of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. For our country and for our world. May the historical life of Jesus, his teachings, his words, and selfless example be the basis for all social civility and respect for life. Lord, have mercy. mercy. For all who suffer and are burdened in any way. May they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit through the corporal works of mercy and the prayers of the church. Lord, have mercy mercy. for our community. May we generously receive the word of Jesus and with the prayers of the Holy Family of Nazareth, continue to grow as intentional disciples of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. For all of our departed family and friends, especially our departed moms and alums, Lord, have mercy mercy. for all of our intentions and for all who have asked to be remembered in prayer. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children. So you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened in their vocation as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, May honor them always with a spirit of profound respect and abiding love. Through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
Pray that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our life and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, I in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son, I in the highest, O Son, I in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <laughs> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember all the departed alums of Holy Family University and our deceased moms, who you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died 
and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorified body. To all our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver, us from evil. deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, my God, in my cup, my 
Christ in us. Let's go with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let the holy and the wise and the fire of the of skies, let the mountains give with gladness, and the joyful valleys ring. Thank you.
lines of heraldry. Ten-year-old is 